Imagine a Western economy that has got the best uh, public education system, it's got the, the most accountable form of government, and soon to have the biggest pipes in the whole world. The National Broadband Network provides Australia with one of the most significant political, social and economic opportunities that we will ever see. And certainly it's the greatest opportunity that I've seen in my time as an elected official and my time in public office. So when confronted with that set of circumstances, uh, what difference will it make uh, to the lives of Australians? But today I want to focus on what's, what it's going to do to enhance our democracy. Having massive bandwidth, higher bandwidth networks that the National Broadband Network offers will change everything. And it's really going to be up to the government to be able to tap into what citizens of Australia have to offer and how we can further engage with them using those higher bandwidth networks in the course of governing the country, but also respecting their input as citizens in the way that we deliver services and that way, the way that we garner policy ideas. It's this context that led us to designing the public sphere. With those kind of networks coming along, how would you engage with the public? How would you tap into those ideas in a way that is both accessible and meaningful? Well, a public sphere is designed to do both of those things. It leverages the type of technologies that will become more prolific and more universal as the National Broadband Network is rolled out. But in the meantime, we can do a lot of work and innovate with the tools that we have. And the tools that we have include all of the social media tools. Um, social networking is a phenomenon that's taking off. So let's put it to work for the citizens of this country. And the public sphere is a, a concept where we, we actually drew on some of the inspiration of Jürgen Habermas, who described the public sphere as this. A space that through the vehicle of public opinion, it puts the state in touch with the needs of society. So drawing on that quote, we decided to put technology to work, to tap into the wisdom of the crowd, the knowledge of people that we knew had good ideas, but either were unwilling or unable, or um, for what a, whatever other reason, weren't able to provide the right vehicle to convey their thoughts to the government of the day. We decided on, uh, at, right at the beginning, three topics, and we've subsequently um, done two of those public spheres, and we're heading into our third. The first one was on higher bandwidth networks itself. This was the perfect place to start because the public sphere we believed would really leverage the national broadband network. So what better way than to have our first public sphere on how we would use higher bandwidth networks in Australia in the future. The second one was on Gov 2.0. Again, tapping into the very issues that we would, we would want to be using uh, we would want to be leveraging to enhance our democracy. And the third one which is coming up is on ICT and innovation and looking at industry development specifically across three spheres of the ICT sector, uh, the creative industries, uh, Web 2.0 and mobile applications and of course um, more traditional infrastructure in ICT like hardware and software. The public sphere concept goes like this. It's not a single event, even though each public sphere culminates around a day of presentations. But leading up to those presentations, we openly invite, via the website, a range of uh, presentations, ideas, abstracts, if you like, on people who would like to present on the day of the public sphere. Our presenters are encouraged to keep their presentations very short. Uh, they're fine to use slideshows because we're able to um, mount them on the website uh, at a later point as well as adding to their presentation on the day. Uh, what we, the way we've organised the presentations is to keep them rapid fire, short, succinct, very little discussion in between, in fact just time for a few questions that might have come in on the Twitter feed uh, via the blog or live at the forum and then we move on to the next speaker. In this way, people who are participating either online or in the room at the public sphere are constantly, um, I guess, drawn into the conversation and um, moving along really fast. It allows us to get a lot of issues covered in a single day. The strength of the public sphere, though, is um, sure the day is important, 
but the strength of it is people are then able to go back and review the presentations uh, on, online and they're invited to go back and, and review the blogs and participate and comment further in the blog posts. Presenters to a public sphere um, are asked to do a lot more than present. We ask them to go back and keep an eye on the blog and be able to participate as a presenter as other thoughts and comments come in. This is really important because it adds depth and substance to the issues that they've raised and allows for an ongoing conversation to occur. After the public sphere, uh, there is a, a second very, very important phase. After a, a week or so of those comments continuing, we then uh, create a, a wiki that is the culmination of all of the ideas put forward. Then all presenters and all participants in the public sphere are notified about the presence of the wiki and asked to come in and edit. This is a real strength of the process because not only has everyone been exposed to the ideas, uh, we've, we've heard, we've listened, we've commented, we've seen feedback uh, by, the by the Twitter feed, but the wiki presents the, the, the joint outcome, if you like, of all of the participants. The wiki itself uh, is open for around two or three weeks, uh, depending on um, what we've pre-programmed or, or pre-announced. And then at the end of that process, uh, we have a look at that wiki and close it off and publish that wiki. There's a final process that we've put in place, just as a bit of quality assurance, and that is having a, a system of essentially endorsing the recommendations which are specific policy ideas. By having this quality assurance process right at the end, we can keep the wiki genuinely open and not restrict edits. The principle of the whole process from start where we first call from pre for presentations right through the actual day itself, uh, the blog that runs off the day and we continue to get comments and then the process of the wiki are completely open. To date we've had no negative experiences as far as managing that process goes, but we think we have a system of public sphere um, that permits um, the most open possible participation. It's extremely transparent and anyone can come in and either edit the wiki or make any comment along the way. Finally, once all of this is done, we, have a, we work out the best way to channel these ideas into the government. Now for all of these issues, higher bandwidth networks, Gov 2.0, ICT industry development and growth, we know who the ministers are in the Rudd government that we present those ideas specifically to. And fortunately, um, there have been several processes occurring within the federal government that have invited that kind of feedback, that kind of input and those kinds of ideas. Notwithstanding that, um, the, idea, the concept of the public sphere lifts the profile of the issues that we explore and we're able to make a real difference to the public discussion around those policy issues. Just another point about the openness and transparency of the public sphere. We're of course able to see who's saying what, uh, where it's coming from. We do ask that everyone use their a legitimate email address and identify themselves and we keep a record of all of the wiki edits too. So what we end up with is a, a data set if you like of, of incredible input across a range of social media that forms I guess the, the record of the public sphere. To us this is a very important document because all of this information becomes part of that policy consultation and is available for future reference. The public sphere is in the innovation in policy consultation. Where I think its strength is, is in the applied use of social media. There's a lot of speculation at the moment about where, where social media is taking us. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it just a fad? I believe that there's a massive strength in how people interact online and it's the responsibility of government to make the most of those opportunities. If it brings me closer to my constituents or the government closer to the citizens as part of that conversation, then that's an extremely positive outcome. I'm really looking forward to further experimentation with the model we're using for public sphere. And for our next one, we're changing it slightly again, incorporating Google Docs into the actual day so we can start that iterative process of building the outcomes document 
during the actual day as well. Um, we think that will shortcut and make more accurate the reflection that we've been making in our first draft of the wiki and getting the actual participants in the public sphere involved in the first instance for that first draft for the wiki process. The other thing that we're changing about our next public sphere is incorporating more discussion during the day itself. In the previous public sphere, it was rapid fire presentations. You either got 15 minutes or five minutes to say your bit and then we moved on. In the next public sphere, we're going to create more opportunities for workshopping specific areas of policy and then using Google Docs to convey those ideas back into the process on the day itself. Um, we don't know how it will go. It will rely on the, the individuals that participate as everything does. But we're really looking forward to seeing um, how that one proceeds.